discussion. That was the yeah. last, yeah. I think it was a great discussion okay. between the three of you. Yeah. And, um, Please. It's basically, you know, you have a mutual respect to each other. Um, but what I'll, I'll just add one more thing, which is I think, I think it's it's Come based upon the so natural now. inclination. Yeah. To, to state that there is somebody above you, there is someone above you. I think that's the natural inclination that everyone's born with, right? So, I would say that look. Who do we believe as Allah? Who is Allah? Who do we believe Allah? Allah is our Lord who nurtured us, who created us, who gave us a purpose in life. And he gave, and he's all, he also takes care of the universe, yeah? Through his countless blessings and favors, right? So we worship Allah only to him. Why? Because he created us, right? So naturally, so logically speaking, if, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if Almighty God, is the only one who created us, then logically speaking, we should worship him, correct? So we don't associate any partners with him. We don't, we don't worship the creation, rather we worship the creator, right? So what are the signs of his existence? The signs of his existence is around you. You see the order of the night and the day, you look at the creation, the heavens and the earth, right? And the, and the, and the alternation of the night and the day, these are all signs of his existence. If I was to ask you a, a very simple example, you know, if I present you a Samsung phone, a Samsung phone, it depicts, it, it testifies to the evidence that there is a designer. Great, you that there's a creator. I'll huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you why, I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why. Because look, from your natural inclination, you will not say that this phone came from nothing. You will not say that this phone always existed, correct? You know that there's an origin behind this phone. Why? Because you look at the features of the phone, you look at the applications, you look at the software, it depicts that there is a designer. Even though you haven't seen the designer, but you know for sure that there is someone who is intelligent, who, who has the knowledge, the power and the intent to bring this phone into existence, correct? So if you allow me to call the human beings as machine, then we're far more complex than this simple phone, which is a machine. So what about the creation of the heavens and the earth? The creation of the human beings from a drop of water? This cannot come from blind matter, it cannot come from randomness. So these are the signs of his existence. Just because you haven't seen God, you haven't seen Allah, that does not mean he doesn't exist. Do you understand? But from your natural inclination, you know that, look, this universe didn't always exist. If I was to ask you this tree right behind you, did this tree has a beginning or did it always, did it always exist? Your natural inclination will tell you no. There is, there is a purpose behind this tree. There's an origin behind that tree. And you know, there's a study that's, that's been done by uh, Professor Justin Barrett from Ox Oxford University. And he stated that when kids, and by the way, the, the, the kids who are in, like by the time they reach the age of three, and we're talking about kids who are brought up in a non-religious parents. So non-religious parents, they don't, they, they don't really value God or anything yeah. like that. But kids, when they're brought up, even in a non-religious environment, they start questioning themselves that, look, why does the tree exist? Why does the mountains exist? Why do the rivers exist, right? So therefore, they say, what about our existence? Yeah. Why do we exist? So by the time they reach the age of four, they recognize there's a higher power. Whether that's in, um, whether they say it's Jesus, whether they say it's yeah. God, you see in every literature, every civilization, they always have you know, the concept of a higher power, right? So this is well ingrained, it's well rooted into your human nature, that there is, that there is the creator, right? So the creator, based upon his wisdom, he sent us guidance. For example, the mobile phone, the Samsung phone. The one who created the Samsung phone, would he not give you the guidance, instruction? How should we use the Samsung phone, correct? Let's say, for example, if, if, if there's a water that, that, that spills into the Samsung phone, where would you seek? You would seek for guidance. Why? Because you don't have the knowledge. But the one who created the phone knows what's good and bad for the phone. What about the creator? Do you not think, based upon his wisdom, do you not think that he will send his guidance? How should we lead our life? Why? Because Allah says in the Quran, in his final revelation, that in, 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 in chapter 67, the Quran says Allah knows his own creation. Allah knows his own creation. So he sends his guidance, how to lead a good life, how to abstain from bad stuff, right? So now the question is, what are the proofs? Because like you said, as you said earlier on, it's a very bad question. Yeah. There's so many different religions. <laughs> so, I don't know which they're all, they're all trying to like market the same thing. They're like, oh, yeah. this, you know, exactly. this way is the right way. This way is the right Correct. way. Is going down is bad. Up is good. Paradise, heaven, Valhalla, whatever kind of yeah. heaven, good and evil. Yeah. Down is hell. I also, I also found your point on like, you know, um, the whole questioning why we're here. I thought that was very interesting. So I think yeah. that like um, 
So the meaning of life, it can't be um, measured by empirical means. I think it's inherently subjective. Uh, let's, let's just because people find purpose from different means. Good, good. So I want to check with that point. That's, that's a very interesting point. Every invention, there's a purpose behind, correct? Mm -hmm. So who sets the purpose? Uh, the, the inventor, the author, the invent. So what about the creator? Do you not think he'll give us a purpose? Do you think he'll just leave us alone? He'll just wander around? Or do you think he'll give us a purpose? That's a tough one. Because again, there's, there's that whole idea of free will. Like, you know, no we, problem. We, we as beings can make our own decisions. Yeah, I agree with that. So, but, we're under, we're, but we're under God's will. So we don't have absolute free will. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah, because everything, so we, we have limited choice. Yeah, but, God, but it's under God's will. Okay? But I want to get back to the point, which is look, every invention, there's a purpose behind, correct? Yeah. So who sets the purpose behind the invention? The guy that's invented. The inventor. So what about the creator? As you, you agree that the human beings, if we, if we call the human beings as machine, then we're far more complex. Sorry, we're, more, we're far more complex than the, the, a simple phone, correct? Yeah. So do you not think that the Creator will give us guidance? Do you not think He will set us a purpose why we were created? Possibly, but then at the same time, I think it's, it's, the, it's down to the interpretation of the individual. Correct, correct. So now, if I was to give you compelling evidences, let's say if I was to give you compelling evidences for the truthfulness of Islam, I'm not asking you to accept, I'm just asking you to take it on board. Yeah, yeah, I'll approach it with an open mind. Fantastic. Yeah. So look, we as Muslims, as part of our faith, we believe that Almighty God, He sent prophets and messengers amongst us. So we also affirm in the previous prophets, Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon all of them, all of them came with one message, which is to submit to the will of the one true creator, not to associate any partners with him. Do not worship the creation, rather worship the creator. So logically speaking, doesn't it make sense that we should worship the creator alone and not worship his creation? Does it make sense? It makes sense. Why? Because he created us. The fact that he created us, he deserves to be worshipped. Why should I worship a, a creation that depends upon the creator? So we worship the creator alone. We don't believe that Jesus is God. We don't believe animals are God. Any creation. I'll give you the definition of what the universe is. The universe is anything that's besides God. Why is that? Because God is uncreated. But everything besides the, the uncreated is the creation. So I am one from that creation. You are one from that creation. It's like he is the one that created the universe. Correct. Correct. So you got the point, right? So now, logically speaking, it, 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 it makes sense that you should only worship him alone, right? So now we believe that God, based upon his wisdom, he sent prophets and messengers. He sent Abraham, Moses, Jesus, as I said, but with one message. That one message, that fundamental message, is to submit your will to the one true creator, not to associate partners with him. And that's the essence of the meaning of Islam. Islam in Arabic, the very word Islam is submission. You submit to the will of the one true God. How do you submit? by following the guidance that God has, has revealed to the prophets. So at the time of Moses, peace be upon him, he was given the Torah, he was given the, the revelation to Moses, peace be upon him. However, a clarification, we do not believe in the Torah that the Jews possess. We believe that's been corrupted. However, there may be some remnants of truth, but we believe that the Torah has been corrupted. But it is part of article of our faith to believe in the previous revelations. So Moses, peace be upon him, he was a messenger of God. So whoever follows the guidance that Moses came with, and submits to the will of the one true God, he's a Muslim. A Muslim is a person who submits to the will of the one true creator. So at the time of Moses, peace be upon him, whoever, whoever submitted to the guidance that God has revealed to Moses, which is the Torah, and they accept Moses as a messenger, then they're Muslims. So at the time of Jesus, peace be upon him, the Injil, the gospel was revealed to him. So anyone who followed Jesus, peace be upon him, at his time, and they submit to the guidance that God has revealed to Jesus, they're Muslims. Now we say that the Quran is the last and final revelation given to the last and final messenger of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So now, the difference is, all the previous prophets, they were local prophets. They were only sent for their people and for their time. And every prophet was given miracle. Why? Because a miracle is supposed to be convincing proof that they are sent by God, correct? Because there's so many charlatans, right? So many people lie that I'm a, I'm a prophet of God. So now, Almighty God has given convincing proofs. Why is Moses a, 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 a messenger of God? So one of the miracles that Moses was given is, he was able to turn the, uh, the staff into a snake by God's permission, right? Because at the time of magic, because magic was very prevalent at that time. So now he's teaching to the people of Moses and Pharaoh that look, this cannot be magic. Because it's, it's because turning the, the, the staff into a snake is impossible yeah. unless it's by the will of God, correct? Yeah. yeah? So 
every prophet was given miracle. But now you may ask you to, you may ask yourself this question, but I didn't live at the time of Moses. I didn't see the miracle. So what? So give me convincing proof that Muhammad is the messenger of God. Yeah, that's a logical, logical point. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the greatest miracle that he came with is the Quran. And there's a challenge. The, the Quran mentions, Allah mentions in his last and final revelation, the Quran, in chapter 2, verse 23, a challenge to the Arabs. Because the Arabs at that time, they were very proficient in their language. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he reveals to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, of his speech. Now he's asking the Arabs, try and produce a chapter like it. And none of the Arabs, even up until this day, none of them can meet the can meet the uh, the challenge right now there is an objective criteria right but i'll give you i'll give you convincing proof as well prophet muhammad peace be upon him made many prophecies many prophecies right if i was to ask you who would know the future events in great details who would know the future in great details god great because god knows everything yeah he knows the past present and future right but prophet muhammad peace be upon him he gave many prophecies what will happen in the future. One of the, one of the convincing proof is the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that one of the signs of the hour, one of the signs of the day of judgment is when the barefooted Arab Bedouins will compete each other in constructing two buildings. Now notice the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said this more than 1,400 years ago. Now he's very precise in his term. He didn't say any Arab. He said barefooted Bedouin Arabs. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not a Bedouin. He was a city Arab. Because why? Because he was trading. He's talking about the Bedouin Arabs who were very simple-minded. They only had camel, they only had the tent, right? Now, where's the tallest building? No problem. It's in Dubai, I'll give you a clue. Sorry? It's in Dubai. Burj Khalifa. Oh, okay. Yeah, Burj Khalifa, right? So that is the tallest building. Not only that, do you know who's competing? Dubai, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Qatar. They're all competing. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said this more than 1,400 years ago. At that time, it would make sense that, look, he had the two greatest empires on, on, on either side. He had the Roman Empire, he had the Persian Empire. They were known for constructing two buildings. The Prophet peace be upon him, did not say that the Romans and the Persians would compete each other in constructing two buildings. He's talking about the Bedouin Arabs who at that time, their livelihood was just camel and tent. Very, very primitive at the time. Very primitive at the time. Yeah. So how did the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him knew this more than 1,400 years ago? Because Dubai, barely 30 years ago, it was a desert. I can even show you a photo. Oh no, yeah, I think I saw like um, a before and after. Before photo, and after, from, right. From like the early 80s. Brilliant, like, brilliant. Basically just empty. Brilliant. Sand. And I was born in 1993. Now, in my lifetime, I'm seeing this. Yeah. How did the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, how did he know this more than 1,400 years ago? What do you think? Do you think that's a compelling evidence? I would say it's questionable. Why is it questionable? If I was to give you multiple prophecies, there are many, many prophecies, many prophecies that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, gave that we are seeing today. For example, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, a time will come when interest will be so prevalent. You know interest, yeah? It will be so prevalent that everyone will be affected by it. Even though they're not, in, even though they're not involved in interest, everyone will be affected by it. Now everyone's affected, right? Even if you go to Tesco shopping, there's a bit of interest. You open up a bank account, there's a bit of interest. How did the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, how did he know that we're going to live in a global-based global interest-based economy more than 1,400 years ago? I'll give you another one. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, a time will come when the markets will come closer to homes. At that time, what was the market outside? Market store. You sell your clothes. Now you can start your business at home. Oh yeah. Again, commerce. It's commerce. What would market mean at that time? What do you think the markets would have meant 1,400 years ago? Yeah, they would have just been like stores. Stores, yeah. But now he's saying the markets will come closer, closer and closer. I interpret that as obviously uh, the evolution of e-commerce. You know, exactly. How did the Prophet Muhammad peace need this for? I mean, internet started when, 1995? Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said this in 7th century. How did you know this? 
I'll give you many, look, I can give you many, many prophecies. So I'm giving you that these are convincing proofs for the prophethood of Muhammad, peace be upon him. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he came with a perfect legislation. For example, the five evils, Islam came to prohibit. Yeah, for example, one of them is associate partners with God. Associate partners with God, you're, you're, you're worshipping the creation. That's, a bad, that's, one of the unforg that's an unforgivable sin. If one dies upon it and he doesn't repent, then hellfire, right? Why? Because you give the due rights of the, of the creator, correct? You agree with that? The second point is, Islam also eradicates sexual immorality. So we value marriage. Why? Because studies have shown that 7 out of 10 prisoners, delinquents, came from broken homes. They don't even know, again, they don't even again, identify their fathers, their mothers. Again, it's, right? like, a, it's like the sociological perspective. So I know sociologists sort of tend to study sort of the impact of the family exactly. around the shaped society and how like it shapes individuals. Exactly. I so, do agree that family is a very like, important component in our society. Fantastic. The children they need the both that both sort of like uh, mother, father sort yep. of like guidance. So Absolutely in a correct. Way, I do agree with that. The so whole, Islam the of the family, exactly. The so it's. Recent years with higher exactly. rates and higher rates of uh, Exactly. So look, Islam yeah. So Islam came here. Islam states, do not go near, do not even go near zina. Do not go near adultery. Do not go near fornication. Why? Because in our sharia, in our Islamic legislation, prevention is better than cure. So look how it nips nips it in the bud. Before you talk about before you deal with the problem, you know, nip it in the bud. Which is if you want if you want to Look, Islam has given us the right to fulfill our desires, but in the correct way. Get married, have children, get married, have children, then you have stability. When you have a stable family, you have a stable society. You know you when you have a have stable society, you have a stable nation. You know you can have stable families without them being married. You know that, right? Okay, Me, yeah, yeah, perhaps well, there's like, the case. I, 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 perhaps that's the case, but... Of society, you yeah. can have um, a man and a woman, or two men and two women, yeah. they can have a family. Stable and the child can grow up perfectly happy. Yeah, no, no, of course I agree. I, I, again, I agree with Martin. But it's, yeah, My yeah. parents are married and they're still together. Yeah, no, no. This is a healthy thing if two people want to Islam, so. Islam also permits That's divorce. Say, Islam also permits divorce. In fact, there's a, there's a whole chapter in the Quran, Surah 65, which is called Surah Talaq. The divorce. So, yeah, divorce is part of that. However, what you mentioned, yeah, I mean, there could be some anomaly cases of, you know, uh, cohabitation is functioning well. but. We're, you're talking about individualistic. If you look at collectively, what's better? Marriage. You understand? So that's the reason why Islam values family. That how do you keep a stable family? Get married. Have children. Okay? Now, do you know why? You're going to get sexual tra tra transmitted diseases. You sleep around with women. Okay. You know the difference between marriage and having boyfriends and girlfriends? Boyfriends and girlfriends, you have no responsibility. Once you get married, you have responsibility. That's the reason why people want to fulfill their desires and they don't want to get married. Once you get married, you can't cheat your wife. When you cheat your wife, what happens? Moral degeneration. No, no, no. I'm saying, but there's a, but there is a, there's a consequence, correct? Infidelity. Where's the infidelity when it comes to boyfriends and girlfriends? There is no infidelity. That's true love. True love is what, if you truly love somebody, you get married to them based upon the contract, that I will fulfill my obligation, you fulfill your obligation towards me. That's called true love. True love is not when you sleep around, you have boyfriends and girlfriends, you don't get married, right? Because you can commit, you, you can sleep around with a woman all you like. Where's the responsibility? Where's the sense of responsibility? That's the reason why abortion increases. Why? Because you devalue the importance of marriage. Unwanted pregnancy. If you want, if you want to eradicate abortion, unwanted pregnancy, get married. That makes you a responsible person, a responsible mother, a responsible father. Uh, sorry? It's just a piece of paper and a ceremony. A piece of paper, okay. So you're, you're, thinking more, you're thinking more of an individual basis. You have to look at collectively, right? Islam looks at collectiveness. For example, alcohol. Look, alcohol, there may be some benefits. Even the Quran mentions, even Allah says in the Quran, there's some benefits and there's some loss. But there is more loss than the benefits. What does alcohol do to you? Alcohol makes your intellect go away. It impairs your judgment. Impairs your judgment. So that's one of the things that Islam came with to preserve intellect. So anything that... Uh, that disrupts your akal, your intellect, Islam prohibits. For example, cocaine, drugs, uh, you know, class A drugs, alcohol, all of them, all of them are prohibited. Couldn't you say like certain drugs, in a way, like they can, because again, like 
again, we're, we're, we're sort of big music fans. Like a lot of the bands we listen to, they, they took drugs, and it, I think in a lot of ways it actually helped shape their music. Because yeah, well, some, what about I, I'm not saying like all drugs do this. I'm saying like, yeah. like certain drugs. They, yeah. They I mean, have you had groupies before? Sorry. Groupies. Groupies. Yeah. You, no, you don't know what groupies? Part. Come on, this is they, this is this is the culture of rock, right? Yeah, maybe the music career, you know, maybe very great, earning great money. But you know what? Materialism will not get you anywhere. Money will not get you anywhere. Money is needed, however, don't attach your money. Do you know why? Money has no feelings towards you. Money will leave you one day. Your parents are going to leave you one day. So now you have to think to yourself that, look, I'm going to die one day. Everyone knows one of the certain things that we know, the certainty, either you're an atheist, a Muslim, a Christian or Jew, is you're going to die one day. Yeah, you're all going to die one day, right? So what, exactly. So what is money going to benefit you? In the I long agree, time. and I, I, I agree on that point with the whole thing, like that sort of chasing money and materialism, because I feel like as as we've grown, as we've become more comfortable, we're not living day to day now. Yes. It's a society where we can save up for the future. Correct. And I think, in a way, that's sort of encouraged. Like, and again, with social yeah. media, it's encouraged this culture of like sort of that bit consumerism, exactly. where we're more drawn to material possessions. Yeah. Actual like exploring relationships. Islam doesn't people. tell you. Look, Islam doesn't tell you. Don't seek livelihood. In fact, it's important that you seek livelihood. It's a very important you seek livelihood, right? Because look, when you get married, you have to support your wife, you have to support your children, you have to support your parents, right? So Islam gives us a ethical framework, how to earn money in the correct way. However, don't attach your money in your heart. There's a, there's a scholar, his name is Ibn Qayyim. I think he said it very well, may Allah mercy on him. He said, make sure the money is in your hand, make sure it's not in your heart. So keep the money in your hand, yeah. not in your heart. So I'm not saying that you should stop earning money. No, earn money, but in the no, correct I way. I think Fantastic. Money, money is just sort of, uh, now our way of survival. Exactly. We need money to eat. You need, exactly. We need money to be able to buy a house. It gives you It gives you options. options. Absolutely. Independence. Exactly. Uh, livelihood. So it's, yeah. You could win, you could win the lottery and have all the money you want. The lottery is haram. And let's, say, let's say tomorrow I won the lottery. And yeah. I just got tons of money, so now I can, I can live in the home I want to live in. Yeah. I can go anywhere I want in the world yeah. now. I don't have to work anymore. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to get bored. I'm going to get bored. Okay. So, so money isn't going to be... Maybe, okay. maybe, lot, maybe lottery enough. is not a good example. Because no, even no. gambling is prohibited in Islam. Gambling is prohibited. Why? Look, look, like you said, there's chances that you may win a million pounds, right? But what hap But let's look at collectively. Typically, like the probability is against you. Probably against you. But let's say even for the sake of argument, that person wins one million pounds, right? Yeah. But he's going to keep gambling, gambling, he's losing more money. That's the reason why collectively, if you look at the gambling life, the gamblers, their life, they're in debt. Islam came here to stop this. This is the Sharia. The Sharia that Islam came with is prevention is better than cure, to stop the prevention. So there is a, there is a, a trading is, is, is allowed in Islam as long as there's no interest, as long as you do it ethically with honesty in business transaction. In fact, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, even taught us how to deal with business. Because Islam is a complete way of life. That's the reason why in, in our prayer, we always ask for the best in this world and the hereafter. But, however, think about what's going to happen to you when you die. You're going to stand in front of your Lord. If you know that Islam makes sense to you, the foundation, that there's none worthy to be worshipped except Allah, and you know that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon the messenger of Allah, I've given you convincing proofs, it's for you to think about. But if the moment you realize that Islam is true, what excuse can you give in front of your Lord when you die? How, what's the guarantee that you're going to live in this park by being alive? There's no guarantee. So look, I'm not, I'm not telling you to hurry up. I'm not saying that. But understand that time is running out for all of us. Time is running out for me. Time is running out for you. Right? So if you, you have to think about yourself that, look, now I've given you things to think about. Read the Quran. You have a copy of the Quran, right? Both of you. Uh, I yeah, encourage you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I encourage you to read the Quran. The brother, mashallah, before, you know, he explained very well what the Quran is all about. It's a, it's a book of guidance. It shows us a way how to worship the Creator. For example, if you want to buy a gift for your mother, are you going to buy a gift based on what you love or based on what she loves? Well, obviously, what she loves. What she loves. Why? Because, again, it's going to be something that's special to her. Exactly. So, what about the Creator? By worshipping the way how he wants, that's true love. The way how we think that God should be worshipped is subjective. Yeah? So that's why the Quran came here as a book of guidance. How to lead a good life, how to attain piety. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and we should follow the Sunnah. We should follow 
the teachings, the lifestyle of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. So we, I want to make this very clear. We don't only believe in the Quran. The Quran we believe is the speech of Allah. But we also believe in the Sunnah, in the sayings and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Right? So it's, in, it's integral, both of this, to be part of your life. By following the messenger, the messenger peace be upon him, for example, the messenger peace be upon him said, pray as you've seen me pray. So we as Muslims, we should pray five times a day. So since he's the messenger of Allah, he's the messenger of God, how should we please Allah? We follow the messenger. So that's the reason why it's very important that you don't only believe that there is one creator, you also believe in the guidance that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was given. That is the true love. You worship God the way how he wants, not the way how we want. So now I've given you convincing proofs. Now it's up to you. If you're sincere, you'll find the truth, inshallah, if God wills. If you're not sincere, then there's a consequence. There's, a, there's paradise and there's hellfire. Allah well, says in his book, Allah until says... Until you can demonstrate there's a paradise and hellfire. Yeah. See, when you, when you say things like that, that's potentially quite damaging. And I'm going to use a term that's going to sound quite strong, but this always comes with questions, okay. whether it's Islam or Christianity. Good, good. Or, or Catholicism or anything. Good. When they start saying, you'll die, you'll find out one day paradise or hell. Yeah. You, it's, it's mental abuse because you're, you're starting to use language yeah. that can potentially damage people. Do you believe in the hellfire? Do you believe? Do you believe in paradise? Believe in so why should that affect you? There's no reason. If, if for example, someone this say, is why I'm yeah. now an atheist, and this is why I don't follow religions and why I see the danger. Of okay. Because language like but that. But my first, yeah. Okay, wait, wait. My first, my first premise was never to, was never to, you know, tell you about heaven and hell. That's not yeah. my first premise. My no, first premise is to tell you what Islam is all about. The brother explained to you Islam very well with love and compassion, right? I'm doing the same to you. But however, we as Muslims, we are also warners and giving glad tidings. Now look, if you know that Islam is true and you accept the message of Islam, paradise is promised for you. Eternal, bliss, no death. The only death that you'll experience is here. You're going to have eternal paradise. However, if you know Islam is true and you, you would rather follow your own desires, then we also have to warn you there's hellfire as well. Okay, so we give you the good news, do we give you the good news and we also give you the bad news. So, okay, so for you it's an empty phrase. So, for you it's not mental abuse. If, for example, if somebody tells me, you know what, Sant for example, you know what, the devil is going to come to you. Well, if you don't believe in the devil, I don't care. I don't believe in the devil, so it's not going to affect me. But if you know that Islam is true, then obviously it entails that you believe in the unseen. You believe in paradise, you believe in hell. So obviously for you, if you're not sincere, obviously it's not going to affect you. Yeah, but so someone who's sincere you're would. you indoctrinated into the religion, and the person in that religion, in that collective group, starts saying, yeah. you already believe in this stuff, and if you keep going, you'll get paradise. Yeah. Sure. If you go against this, maybe no, after, no, no, after, no, no, no. If the message, no, I want to make this very clear. If the message of Islam, yeah. Hell, Good, good, good. Allah, good. I want to make this point. Allah says in his in his book, Allah says he does not punish a nation until he sends messengers. So that means if the message is not conveyed to you, then you're not held accountable. That's the justice, justice, justice of Islam. That's the justice. But once the message of Islam is conveyed to you, and everything makes clear to you, and in your heart, and in your actions, you know that Islam is true, and you turn away from it, that's when you made your decision already. So, I'm not telling you you're going to go to, I don't even know if I'm going to go to paradise. Straight away, I don't know. I don't know, okay? So, I'm not, it's not a question of indoctrination, it's a question of the fact that, look, if Islam is true, then paradise is true. Hell is true. Then, like, yeah? could you argue that, say, like, especially, say, more extremist, like, factions, or, like, religious chapters, they could, they could weaponize the whole afterlife thing and use it as a way yeah. of like, manipulating people into okay. a religion. Yes. So first of all, first of all, I don't represent all the Muslims. Yeah. I only represent myself. Again, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. Of course, you get uh, it, right? You. I'm right. Not, I'm not you can only speak to yourself and interpret exactly. it how you exactly. interpret it. Exactly. Uh, what I'm saying is that like maybe more extremist like religions or Yeah, certain, we, we, we condemn the religion, they weaponize Good. the whole afterlife thing to try and Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with you. Uh, I agree with you. But but that but that only makes sense after the person conveys the message of Islam to you. When things makes clear to you, now it's up to you to make the decision. If you want to accept Islam, yeah. if you want to submit your will to God, paradise is promised for you. If you know that Islam is true and you want to turn away, then you've chosen hellfire. That's what I'm saying. There's no, there's no force, there's no compulsion. Allah says in the Quran, in chapter 2, verse 256, La ikraha There is no compulsion, there's no force in religion. Truth stands out clear from error. So it's up to you. I've done my job. 
I've conveyed the message of Islam to you. I've given you convincing proofs why Islam is true, why Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last and final message of God. Now it's up to you to make the decision. Do you, do you believe in Islam? I don't believe in any God. Yeah. Uh, any God. So have a, th have a think about it. Have a think about it. Why, why is that? Is there a so I'm gonna, I'll end the discussion here. I think it's a bit, no, no, no. It's, it's too much over-the-top information. But look, basically, that just to summarize the message of Islam, you worship the Creator alone. You don't associate partners with Him. You don't worship the creation. We don't worship the sun, moon, stars. No, human beings. No, we worship the Creator alone, and we follow the last and final revelation, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. And I gave you the convincing proofs, many prophecies that he made that no human beings could have known at that time. So I've given you proofs, I've given you evidences. Now it's up to you. Now now, now it's up to you. It's up to you now. Now the message of Islam has been conveyed to you. Now you should investigate. Read the Quran, think about it. If you want to read the Bible, look, I know him, right? If you want to read the Bible, go ahead. But you find out, okay, which is actually true. Is the Bible true or is the Quran true? You do your investigation. These people here, yeah, exactly. We Muslims, look, we Muslims are not desperate. We Muslims, look, we Muslims are not desperate for you to become Muslim. You know why? Because Allah makes a promise, He will make His deen, He will make His religion prevail. Now you see Islam is the fastest growing religion. In fact, what's amazing is this country is no longer a majority Christian country. Do you know that? There's a census that's done. And, and, but people don't tell you this, Islam is growing. So we, whether, whether it's me or not, Assalamu alaikum. Look, Allah, look, Islam doesn't need, Islam doesn't need us. So that the camera yeah, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine, no problem. Look, I want to tell you, I want to say this very clearly, right? With me, or with me, Islam will prevail. Allah gives that, gives that promise. Yeah? I'm only doing the job that Allah and His Messenger has given me. That's it. But Islam will prevail, whether with me or without me. But at the end of the day, it's up to you. If you realize Islam is the truth, accept it. If not, Lakum dinu kum baliyadin. To use your own way of life, to use my own way of life. That's it. Yeah. Allah you go, man. Take care. What's your name? Martin. Martin. Nice to me. What's your name? Carl. Carl. Nice to meet you, man. Take care. Have a good day. Got to pray also.